Thank you very much for allowing me to present this afternoon. I want to begin by highlighting some of the guiding principles that the design team used when we developed the concept for the new St. Petersburg Pier and point out that on page 28 of the city's downtown waterfront master plan document, it states that the goals established for the pier competition are consistent with the goals of the downtown waterfront master plan. And so the goals of the city's waterfront master plan were the goals of our design team. One of the design guidelines within the city's waterfront master plan states that public access to the downtown waterfront will be prioritized in the following hierarchy, pedestrians, bicyclists, public transit, and lastly, motorized vehicles. Specifically, the goals of the Peer Advisory Task Force were that the pier be an iconic structure, that programming start close to the upland, and that it provide unique dining experiences. <coughs> In terms of a layout, the new pier, ta the new pier design takes into consideration option number four of the task force's report, which showed a new building on the upland and a new, more narrow pedestrian pier. The advantages stated in the report were clear. Maintenance costs will be dramatically reduced, and this alternative would have the lowest subsidy impact. The subsidy is important. The current subsidy is $1.5 million annually. With the new peer design, it will be significantly reduced. This is accomplished by reducing the amount of square footage over water to maintain, constructing most of the restaurant and retail on land, eliminating public vehicular traffic, and utilizing a narrow bridge design which utilizes significantly fewer pilings. Here is a plan of the existing pier showing the more than 1,500 piles that touch the water. The current design of the new pier includes approximately 260 piles. That's an 83% reduction in the number of piles, meaning less maintenance and less potential for damage from wave action. Before I talk more specifically about the design, I would like you to remember the last time you took a walk on the beach. Why did you go there? Thousands of local residents and tourists use our waterfront park system to walk, ride a bike, stroll with their dog, or put in a training run. We fish, or we just sit and gaze. Traditionally, Piers offered nothing more than the opportunity to be out over the water and allow one to fish or experience stunning views. Non-traditional piers have become cluttered, subsidized amusement parks with almost no focus on the water and no transient boat dockage. Our current pier is a traditional one-directional path leading to a multi-story terminus building. In fact, it is, a, it is a design that current codes advise against because of its high occupant count at the end and its singular means of egress. The new St. Pete Pier reimagines the notion of the traditional approach and provides twin overlapping bridges that create a looping circuit that encircles the water, allowing for a wider variety of experiences as, as visitors travel out, around, and back. It is also inherently safer because of its two means of egress. Opposite the loop that extends out over the water is a complementary loop that encircles the upland. Completing the vision would be a series of additional loops and pathways that engage the downtown and its waterfront edges. Here's an aerial image of the new St. Petersburg Pier. Since the competition, the design team has listened to comments from the community and advanced the conceptual ideas of the project, specifically trying to illustrate what there is to do out there. 
This daytime activity site plan diagram identifies over 30 activities that one can do at the new pier. From dining along the water's edge to feeding the pelicans, there will be plenty to do. The list of nighttime activities is just as extensive. These next slides will describe what the team is currently exploring. The promontory at the eastern end of the main loop provides a large multi-purpose outside gathering space to be used for everything from a beer garden, dancing, special events, or just hanging out for a drink and a snack. A small semi-sheltered space below the canopy will give the sense of a grotto. The gelato shop remains, as well as adding a grill for light food services. Here's another image of what the space below the canopy might look like. We know the concern that people have for the long, hot walk in the sun. So we propose to add smaller, shaded breakout balconies along the walkway to provide additional shelter and point out that the entire oval portion of the overwater lens is shaded by the iconic canopy. Watercraft access to the downtown waterfront is also very important. The goal is to provide as many slips as the current pier provides and possibly more if allowable. There is also a bait shop and a concessionaire. This is an overhead view of the marina. At the Inner Harbor, there is also space for electric boat rentals, dock space for a water taxi, and dedicated space for fishermen. Within the marina, transient boat dockage will be made safe through the use of wave attenuation panels around the eastern ring. The marina and the attenuation panels are being designed in conjunction with local marine engineers to ensure the safety of those who use it. At the western edge of the oval is a long radius ramp. At the ramp, we envision a series of benches and areas for seating and people watching. The welcome mat provides a large public square which looks out over the water and the new pier. We see the welcome mat as a piazza element providing great flexibility and the ability to host a variety of community events and unscripted, spontaneous play. Next. There will also be infrastructure at the welcome mat for temporary market tents. Next. And space for food truck rallies. At the hub, we envision a large canopy structure right at the water's edge. Here we create the opportunity for a restaurant with a deck overlooking the water. The concept at the hub is to create the opportunity for a small village of retail amenities to develop at the edge of the uplands while maintaining public access to the water's edge. Here, a scenic waterside cafe with an open deck. South of the hub, we envision a new boardwalk out over the existing jetty. The boardwalk will have benches for observation and possible additional concession opportunities. We also would like to explore the opportunity to allow transient boats to dock in this area. The goal of the underwater reef at the center of the lens is simple to create an attractive underwater design feature that can highlight the estuary and engage the public. That goal has not changed. And to that end, we have had several meetings with members of the ocean team and others in the marine science community. These are people who are specialists in Tampa Bay estuary habitat enhancement and restoration. We plan to have a larger conversation with this group to discuss the possibilities and opportunities of the reef as well as the practical realities of such an element. During the competition, the city asked the design team to think big about the future and imagine what additional components might be added. 
We considered Upland Concept Number 2 in the Peer Advisory Task Force report, which showed new active and passive parks on the Upland. The report stated that programming on the Upland area may be phased in as demand increases and additional funding becomes available. This is a 75-year project, and its long-term success will be reliant on its ability to be flexible and add new features. The new St. Pete Pier design is merely a framework for more opportunities, be it a water park, a children's playground, or other program feature. It will be the community that decides what goes in the master plan. So where does the money come from? This is a map of downtown St. Petersburg, east of the interstate. The area in red shows the boundaries of the in-town TIF district. If you are a property owner in this red area, then a portion of the property taxes that you pay every year are set aside for construction projects within the district. The money must be spent inside this red district. It cannot be spent on a new police station in the green district. So what is the schedule? The design team met last week and began the process of refining the concept and developing the design based upon all of the community input. And you've seen the result of some of that input here today in my presentation. There's still a lot more to go. We are working very hard towards a final basis of design presentation to the City Council in October. If Council approves the project direction, then we will spend the following 14 months furthering the design and producing construction documents. In May of 2013, the existing pier will close and construction on the new pier will begin at the end of 2013 with construction scheduled to be complete in the summer of 2015. This past Tuesday, construction managers were interviewed and Skanska was ranked number one. Skanska has a strong resume of both marine and building projects, including the Tampa Museum of Art. Many people on Skanska's project team are from Pinellas County and their construction manager is a St. Petersburg native. Skanska also has a very strong history of hiring a local workforce and obtaining maximum local participation. Skanska will become an integral part of the team and will ensure that the project remains on budget. So how does the community continue to provide input? The city has set up a dedicated website that can be accessed through the city's website or at the new .com, where the community can provide comments online and get a list of the upcoming meetings. In addition, there will be many more presentations in the upcoming weeks and months where we will solicit the community's input in helping us to develop the plan. The St. Louis Gateway Arch, designed by architect Aero Sarnen, was the result of a design competition whose goals were to stimulate the economy and pay homage to the city's waterfront. Functionally, it is an observatory, but spiritually, it has become the iconic symbol of progress and a gateway to the West. The new St. Petersburg Pier will be spectacular day and night. And like the St. Louis Arch, will become a beautiful symbol of progress that truly celebrates the water and represents the city's collective future. Thank you very, very much.